Hi, it's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, we're going to be making a distribution block. We'll get to it right after this. This is the PC5V1 from K9JEB.com. It has one input, five out, does have a resistor and a fault light for the fuse. And I picked up the optional case with voltmeter for an additional nine bucks. Tools you're gonna need is a soldering iron. I'm using a Heiko FX triple eight D. Set of helping hands, safety glasses, solder sucker, solder. I'm using a power pole test light to make sure I have everything hooked up right. Wire strippers, wire cutters, and needle nose. Okay, we have all the parts we need. We got the base, six power pole connectors, the circuit board, fuse, fuse holders, the wire clips for the power poles, diode, the warning light, screws for the mount, and a voltmeter. Let's start getting this thing put together. Okay, the first thing you want to do is cut the uh, copper wire into 12 pieces between 5 eighths of an inch and 3 quarter of an inch, or 16 to 19 millimeters. I'm going to be cutting them at about 18 millimeters. Halfway there. Now to assemble the power poles. Now we've got all these connected, you want to make sure the copper wire is as straight as possible so that your power poles when you put them on the circuit board aren't leaning in all directions. Okay, we got all the power poles put together. Now we need to add the diode and the little warning light, the LED. Now per the instructions on K9JEB.com, it says to put the fuse holders in first. However, as bad as my eyes are, and as bad as I am at soldering, I'm starting with the really small stuff first. Okay, the little warning light, the LED light goes in these two little holes, and then the diode lays across where the small box is. Let's start with the diode first. Now it's time for the LED. The longer leg is the positive side. And this is proof of why I stink at soldering. We got the warning light uh, soldered on and the diode. Now we'll work on getting the fuse holders soldered on. Fuse holders go in these four holes. And you want to make sure that this side is what's facing towards you when you solder or to the front of the board. 
Now, the tricky part with soldering in these fuse holders is the fact that they require much more heat to get the solder to adhere. Hopefully that'll work well enough. Now for the other one. And now we're going to start putting in the Anderson power poles. Okay, we're going to be soldering right here for the first set of power poles. This is going to be the power in from your battery or power supply. And there's the first one. So I said this is the power in from whatever power source you're using. Okay, now it's time for the second set right here. The positive wire for the voltmeter is going to go here, and the negative over here. So let's get that done real quick. Okay, I'm going to try this without the helping hand, see if I can make a go of it. Got them all on. Now let's put the fuse in, plug it up to a battery, and see what we get. Be using a BioNO Turbo 6A, 6 amp hour battery. Uh, 14.3 volts coming in. Make sure everything's hooked up right. A little test light. That one's good. Alrighty, now let's put it in the case. Okay, we've got everything hooked up. We've got the case on, mounted the voltmeter. And we're at 14.3 volts on the BioNO 1206A. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comments section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description area. While you're here, check out one of these other videos. Thanks again for watching.